Hey guys, and welcome back. Today I am making these place cards and wanted to bring you along since I thought they turned out so cute and perfect for my client's rustic wedding. Since I only have 13 of these to create, I will be designing these in Cricut Design Space, but if you have a larger guest count, then I would consider designing elsewhere since large amounts of graphics and text do slow your design space down and sometimes even crash it. Um, I do actually have a similar workaround in a recent seating chart tutorial, so make sure to check that out. So to get started, I want to build my template. I add in a square, change the background to white, and resize that to 3 by 4 inches. I then add in my score line, rotate that to 90 degrees, and that will be my center fold for the tinted style place card. If you want your place cards to lay flat, size them to about 3 by 2 inches and just forget the score line. The pine graphic is a part of this Creative Fabrica set, which I have linked below along with a font and a custom discount code for a monthly subscription. So I download the set to my computer, then upload the file I want to use to Cricut Design Space. The one I am using is the Winter Floral 14. I select Complex as the image type, hit Continue, and then save that as a print and cut image. This will ensure all the colors and details will transfer over. It is a rather large file, so I size that down to fit on the card and rotate to create this wreath effect. Once my template is designed, I go ahead and duplicate that for as many place cards that I need. I was unsure at this point, so I only do four, but you will see me later on add in the other nine. Now I am ready to add the guest names that I copied from an email and paste it into Cricut Design Space. The font is then changed to match the rest of the wedding signage and I connect those letters by ungrouping them and then welding back together again. Now that I have the exact count, I duplicate until I have enough for each of the guests and I start arranging the names onto the cards. Then I select the place card holder, the name, and both graphics. I flatten all of those together so my Cricut knows to print the names and the pine, then cut the box out around it. Admittedly, I do not do a ton of place cards, it's currently only for my local clients. So you may be able to leave the score line on the back of the card, but just in case I did bring that to the front. Either way, the score line needs to be attached, but you have to flatten your pieces first, so just keep that in mind. Once my project is ready, I give it a quick look over just to make sure each of the pieces was flattened correctly and then I am ready to send it to the printer. One thing I do um, whenever I am to this step is I turn off the bleed and then I go through each of the projects and print out each sheet. This just saves me a few trips to the printer.
I like to set my material to heavy cardstock, but this will depend on the type of paper you are using. Since I have the Cricut Maker, the tool is automatically set for the double scoring wheel, but since I will be using my old scoring stylus, I need to edit that option. Here is the cardstock that I like using because it has this textured looking background to give the cards character, but there really are so many options at pretty much any crafting store. Just head on over to the scrapbook section and there will be hundreds of options for you there. I'll be using my light grip mat for the cards so they easily release after the cut. Once I load this into my Cricut machine, the light sensors will start to register the black box that is around the project so it knows exactly where to cut. So you do not have to perfectly position your cardstock on the mat or anything. The Cricut will recognize where it is and cut it there. I flip the mat over to unload these easily off the mat and use my Cricut tool to get a sharp edge for the tent. Well, thank you so much for watching this tutorial. Let me know what questions you have down below in the video description. And of course, subscribe to my channel for more wedding DIYs. See you soon.